All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, escape speed. In terms of gravity, when you throw things up really, really high, how do we calculate how high they go? Okay, so here's our Earth. And we're going to take an object and we're going to toss it really, really high. And let's call that distance R final. We, of course, start from R initial, R sub I. All right. When you're close to the surface of the Earth, you can just worry about gravitational potential energy as MGH. But of course, when you're talking about going very far away from the Earth, you can no longer just use MGH. Okay, we have to be a little bit more careful. So conservation of energy, we can always use. How do we use it in this case? Well, conservation of energy just says the initial energy has to equal the final energy. If I am launching this thing up with a speed, V initial, what is my initial energy in the system? I, of course, have kinetic. I have gravitational. At the top, maybe it has kinetic, maybe not. We'll cross that out in a second and it certainly has gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy we know. That's just one half m v i squared. That is always the kinetic energy of something until we start talking about relativity. Once you get to speeds that start to approach the speed of light, you have to do things a little bit differently, thanks to Einstein. Okay? But for now, anytime you are moving at relatively slow speeds, Right? and everything is relatively slow compared to the speed of light, you can just use this as a kinetic energy, no problem. What do I put here? What was your name? Right here on the far right? Oh, Matt. Matt? Let me hand Matt the mic. Okay, Matt, I just wrote down the kinetic energy for this particle immediately after launch. What do I want to put here for the gravitational potential energy? Not sure. Okay. Should I put MGH? No. Okay. Good. You were listening 30 seconds ago. <laughs> I don't want to put MGH there. I want to put something else. What do I want to put? Well, last time we derived the potential energy by integrating Newton's universal law of gravitation over a distance. And what we came up with was GMM over R with a negative sign in front of it. This is the gravitational potential energy of that system. All right? What about over here? Matt, what is the final kinetic energy when this thing gets up to the top of its motion and it is momentarily at rest? What do I want to put here for the final kinetic energy? Zero. Zero, right? It's not moving. So that's zero. And then it's at a different height. So I want to put GMM over RF right there. Okay, and so this is the equation that tells you how high this thing is going to go. That's it right there. Okay. The important thing to remember is R is measured from the center of the Earth. So if you want to calculate the altitude when you're all done, you have to subtract the radius of the Earth. So just be a little bit careful about that. Let's say I do the following. Let's say I throw that object up so high that it never, ever comes back. If I do that, what does RF become? Matt, what should I set RF equal to? if the thing just keeps going out away from us forever? One. No. Uh, Christian, what do you think I should set RF to if it goes away forever? Infinity? Yeah, infinity, right? RF is how far are you from the center of the Earth. If it just keeps going, it's infinity, all right? And now look what happens. If I rewrite this equation, this whole term over here goes away. 
So I get one half m v escape minus g m m over r i equals one over infinity, and we know that one over infinity is zero. And now we can just solve this for the escape speed. One half m v escape squared equals g m m over r sub i. I cross out the m's. I multiply by two, and I get v escape equals two g m over r i, and I put a square root on it. And r i is the radius of the planet. And so, in general, for any planet, what's the escape speed? It's this. Two times the gravitational constant times the mass of the planet divided by the radius of the planet, and then you take the square root of the whole thing. You can calculate what this is for the Earth very easily, right? We know the mass of the Earth. We know the radius of the Earth. So for the Earth, you're going to get V escape somewhere around 11,000 meters per second, which is about 22,000 miles per hour. If you launch something from the Earth at that speed, it will leave the Earth and never come back. But let's say we take our Earth and we scrunch it together. If we scrunch it together, R, of course, goes down, which means that the escape speed goes up. It gets harder and harder to leave that planet. And let's say that I scrunch it down so much that I can't launch anything off of it. Right? Let's say I increase the mass so much, I decrease the radius so much, that I can't launch anything off of that planet. What is the fastest possible, the fastest launch speed you can think of? Yeah, there's sort of a speed limit out there to the universe, right? It's C, the speed of light. What is the speed of light? It is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, can't go faster than the speed of light. So let's not throw a rock up in outer space, let's throw a photon up in outer space. I just turn on my flashlight and I shine photons up. They are leaving at sea. Could I have a planet that is so massive and so small that it won't even let light leave it. Maybe. Let's put it in. So V escape is going to equal C, which equals square root 2G M over R. And I can solve this thing for R. I square both sides. I'm going to multiply across by R, divide by that C squared, and I get 2G M over C squared. That's the radius of this new thing. For a given mass, this equation says not even light will escape from this thing. What is that thing? It's a black hole. Okay? This is the radius of a black hole. It's known as the Schwarzschild radius. So when somebody says, what's the radius of a black hole? This is it right here. It's the radius at the point where even light will not escape. If I go a little bit outside of that radius, light escapes. If I'm inside that radius, light doesn't escape. This is why black holes are black. Light can't get out of them. Why? Because the escape speed is so big that even the speed of light is not fast enough. Which is kind of cool, right? I think that's kind of cool. Ah, so much, I decrease the radius so much that I can't launch anything off of that planet. What is the fastest possible, the fastest launch speed 
you can think of. Yeah, there's sort of a speed limit out there to the universe, right? It's C, the speed of light. What is the speed of light? It is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, can't go faster than the speed of light. So let's not throw a rock up in outer space. Let's throw a photon up in outer space. I just turn on my flashlight and I shine photons up. They are leaving at sea. Could I have a planet that is so massive and so small that it won't even let light leave it? Maybe. Let's put it in. So V escape is going to equal C, which equals square root 2GM over R. And I can solve this thing for R. I square both sides. I'm going to multiply across by R, divide by that C squared, and I get 2GM over C squared. That's the radius of this new thing. For a given mass, this equation says not even light will escape from this thing. What is that thing? It's a black hole. Okay? This is the radius of black hole. It's known as the Schwarzschild radius. So when somebody says, what's the radius of a black hole? This is it right here. It's the radius at the point where even light will not escape. If I go a little bit outside of that radius, light escapes. If I'm inside that radius, light doesn't escape. This is why black holes are black. Light can't get out of them. Why? Because the escape speed is so big that even the speed of light is not fast enough. Which is kind of cool, right? I think that's kind of cool.